I can't believe this folks, but we have another House of the Dragon trailer. This one actually being the official trailer, which I guess I didn't realize that the former trailers that I reacted to, you know, when they divided it, the dueling trailers of each side, Team Black versus Team Green, I guess I didn't realize that those were not technically the official trailers and rather just little teases. And honestly, I'm debating even reacting to this because I can't believe we're getting yet another trailer. I already feel like we've seen too much. They've given us so much to hype up this second season here and it's it almost doesn't even feel necessarily like I'm I'm hype I'm sad I will be there regardless uh so I was like dang do I even watch this because you guys know I don't like to watch too many trailers it comes to a point where I feel like it starts to almost just give away too much but then I saw Damon Targaryen in the thumbnail and I was like frick I have to but I was also highly debating even reacting to this y'all I didn't realize my last trailer reactions would be so freaking polarizing I didn't actually even realize in general how split how passionately divided the fan base really is because in my opinion i've made it clear i'm team black but sweet lord i did not realize how scathing of a confession uh, that seems to be some of y'all lit me up god forbid i'm rooting for rhaenyra somebody literally said in my last video if you are still rooting for rhaenyra after the acts that are about to ensue you are a sociopath hey this is all fake this is all fiction they're all about to be committing major war crimes i'm just rooting for hers we know we know going into all of this that entire bloodlines are about to be wiped off the map of the seven freaking kingdoms everyone's about to be committing major acts of violence major wrongs god forbid i'm rooting for rhaenyra's okay i'm so sorry and i've always felt like i've been just kind of like mainstream with that like kind of just bandwagoning with that stance because in my opinion i think the show again to me pretty clearly frames you know rhaenyra her side in is nobody's in the right here literally everyone is about to just uh, violence is about to ensue i was necessarily in the right but i feel like season one really framed rhaenyra to be the one to root for to be viserys's actual favorite child so if she's his fave then she's my fave you know like that's that's kind of i feel like the approach that season one made very clear so i'm honestly shocked you know i'm intrigued and very interested in, in the fact that there's still such polarized perceptions here of each each side you know some of you very passionately rooting for the greens it's just it's just really interesting to see how divisive this show is that's my stance going in uh i saw damon targaryen in this thumbnail and i was like frick i have to react to it so we're gonna get right into that <laughs> i'm scared we're gonna see it all at this point but i'll take it here we go the targaryen who sits the iron throne is not just a king or a queen they are a protector of the realm. Now I find myself in an impossible position. All hail, King Aegon! The enemy usurped my throne. We're going to King's Landing. <laughs> yeah, we are! We ride at dawn! Well, what are we going to do about it? We must play the board before us. Proceed cautious. Fuck dignity. I want revenge. Are you allowed to curse in a trailer? I guess you can. It's this HBO. The, realm, the great houses will come to our side. I did not think they would be so eager to die. My ships sail at your command. The realm's only hope. Isn't a leader strong enough to unite it? Do you accept me as your queen and ruler? Damon! This senseless war will end. Should not now us prevail. Not like this. I'm a sentence love for our enemy. That makes her a fool. The enemy without may be fought with swords. The enemy within is more insidious. There is more than one way to fight a war. Oh. 
Frick, a little spin on winter is coming. Frickin' war is coming, y'all. Frick, okay, okay. Well, I don't regret watching this because that actually planted some seeds that, you know, I, I, I wasn't really considering for themes going into the season. You know, I just kind of have been looking at it as it's just gonna be violence out the wazoo. You know, everybody going for each other's jugulars, you know, bracing myself for that, for the major, you know, war aspects that are to come on such a grand scale. I mean, as, like, as we've seen with Game of Thrones, you know, when it comes to mass destruction, they go all out. So that's, I think, just what I've been mentally preparing for for the season but I haven't considered some of the other seeds there that were planted in season one that are probably just going to be exacerbated by you know all of the stress and the, the actual toll of war you know I imagine just tightens all of those pre-existing internal and emotional conflicts that they kind of laid the foundation for you know for example they're a little bit shocking you know Damon and Rhaenyra but again I was curious if this was something you know going on there what would cause him to lash out as we see in the season one finale he goes and strangles Rhaenyra. I remember being curious if that was kind of coming from a place of jealousy for her. Like now that Viserys had actually been dead, it's it's cemented now. Like the throne is up for grabs. Yes, it's been usurped by the Greens, but if if they're gonna come back fighting, you know, like I've always wondered if it's still on his mind and if in that moment of kind of just like aggression that was running through his mind, like, this could, this could and should be my throne too. Like yes, Rhaenyra feels like she's been usurped but we know he's always had eyes on that iron throne and and he is clearly a volatile character as we've seen that's no secret so I am very curious if this is going to be you know I didn't consider that you know here I am like yeah I'm team Rhaenyra I've always been angry on her behalf but for him as well you know he still sees that probably I, I'm assuming is as his throne like that should have been his all along and yes you know he's gonna be loyal to his wife but that doesn't mean he can't secretly wish that that throne was his so he would equally be salty seeing that you know Aegon has usurped it you know so yeah he's gonna be rallying for Rhaenyra here leading the charge but I'm sure that's gonna be on the back burner of his mind like if he plays his cards right you know he could take that throne this is why I don't support them. I've never freaking shipped them. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to brace myself for their relationship drums. Other interesting seed, you know, Aemon questioning his own mother, suggesting that she has love for the enemy, which makes her weak, you know, which is, you know, alluding to the fact, I guess, that she's gonna be trying to play things soft and merciful and not necessarily take a full on approach. Granted, I am curious if he says that after she freaking probably rips him a new one after he accidentally kills Lucerus. You know, he's probably salty. She probably, I want to see her absolutely unleash on him, you know. He's coming from that perspective. You know, he's already drawn first blood. So I'm assuming that he's probably just going to lean into it. You know, again, that was something I was questioning. Are we going to see? He's 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 still young. He's still supposed to be like, uh, what, in his teens? Again, the people in Westeros, there's something in the water. They just age up like Sims. But you know, he is still young and he slayed his own, you know, little nephew unintentionally. You know, that's, that's the biggest crux of all of this you know I'd been curious if we'll see some vulnerability from him you know following that reflecting on that or if he will kind of embrace that as clearly you know the rest of the high towers the greens seem to be rallying bracing for war you know if he's gonna kind of accept that and own it as like you know their first their first sign of dominance their their first chess move but I can assume it's it's going to go that direction if he's already questioning his own mother's, you know, backbone in all of this. <laughs> That's also the, just the funniest thing about all of this. He points out like his own mother still has love for the enemy and she's not even necessarily, you know, tied by blood, but himself, Aegon, like all of Alicent's children are technically, I just never even perceive it that way when watching and I often forget like they're all technically family but they will not be treating each other as such and if anything, family can cut cut the deepest wounds. So we're coming down to the wire here. This is already gonna be here in a few weeks. So I'm gearing up for my reactions to this season. Looking forward to seeing you guys over in those. But until then, war is coming, y'all. Hope you guys are doing so very well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye guys.